Hi viewers, and today we're going to be looking at creating an array of pockets. Now I'm using a spiral path for this array, and what happens is I'll actually create one circle and plot this across a spiral and actually pocket the shape underneath. Now this has come from a question on my channel and I hope this is the solution you're looking for. I think from the question that you've asked this is what you're actually looking for but I have another solution to something slightly different that you may want where we're using the full spiral to actually pocket the shape and I'll get to that um, in another video. So this one we're just going to make this pad and this spiral and a number of holes pocketed along that spiral. Now we use three workbenches for this. We use the part design, we use the part and the draft and I'll show you how to actually use those to create this effect as we go. Okay so I'll start this, I'll start a new project and we'll go from there. So let's get rid of this. I'll save and there we go. So I'm gonna start from the actual right from the beginning from the start workbench. So from here I'm gonna create a new sketch. We'll hit the create a new sketch over up here or file new. So at the moment we're still in start and I'm gonna drop straight into the part. Now the first thing I'm gonna do is actually create the spiral for the path, the path that I'm going to follow. Now I've dropped into the part and along this primitive toolbar here um, there is a option here which is creation of a parameterized geometric primitives and that's the one you want so we click that and what this allows us to do is it gives us a number of uh, geometric primitives to actually select and we can actually supply um, parameters to actually alter the size and dimension and the shape of these primitives and we'll find um, in this case I'm using a spiral so we find a spiral here and what I found with the spiral is just to actually select the defaults leave it at the defaults and hit create allow it to create the spiral hit close and then if you click the spiral you can actually alter the spiral parameters here and this is a much better way because it, it updates straight away you can see what's going on so you've got the growth of the spiral You've got the rotations, so you can see the uh, how many rotations you want to give the spiral, how many how many um, how many twists of the spiral you want, and also the radius here, which actually reduces the spiral down in the radius. And you can actually um, just play with these until you get the right effect you want. So I'm going to go some, something like that. And once that's done, we've got our spiral already. So this is what I'm going to be using as a path to allow us to plot, plot an array across, plot, plot an array of holes across. Now, the next thing I'm going to do is create the base. And I'm going to jump into the part design here. And I'm going to create a body and create a sketch. And I'm going to go for the XY plane. I can also select the XY plane here which is a nice way of doing it because if I wanted to flip this around and select a different plane I can actually choose the correct one that I want but I want to go for the XY plane here Oop, there we go and OK that and I'm just going to control shift and plus to zoom in and you can get to the zoom here as well zoom in zoom out there we go right so we've got our spiral and now we're creating our sketcher to create our base so I'm just going to create a normal square here which I want to pad a number of holes in on the face so I've created a square I'm not going to bother about constraining at the moment so I'm going to close that and now I'm going to pad that square and I'm going to give it a pad of around about 2 mil. Obviously, it depends on what scale you're looking at. Um, I've just taken the default, so I'm working in millimeters and at quite a small scale at the moment. So I've padded that, and this, my, my spiral is on the bottom. So if you think that my plane actually lays 
along the bottom of the actual object that I've just padded. That's the reason why. Now, what I like to do is also get hold of the body and go to view. And I'm just going to whack, whack the transparency value up a bit so I can actually see for it. Um, you won't be able to see for it until you click off it. So that's, that's okay. So I can see my spiral underneath there. Um, that's so I can actually see the holes going through as well when I get to that point. But it's just so I can actually see what's underneath. So that's done. So that's my body already that I'm going to actually create the holes into. Right, so I can click on the body and hit space and that will make the actual object invisible. So I can now I can actually work on my spiral. Now I'm going to jump into my draft and the reason why is I'm going to use the actual circles on here rather than creating a sketch around this path. And then I'm going to create a actual sketch from the draft that I created. So I'm going to zoom in to here. Um, let's control shift plus and make sure the top is selected. So looking directly down and I'm going to click on the actual circle in the draft and I'm going to start my first circle right on the beginning of the actual spiral. So if I look over to my left, we can see how many movies it is. And if I click again, there it is. So that circle isn't actually the right size, but I'm going to click on it, and go down over to here, and I'm going to change it to 0 0.10 millimeters. Hit enter, and you notice it hasn't changed. That's because you need to refresh. So if you go out to edit, refresh, fresh, control R, and I'm just going to bring that up a bit more. So I'm going to click it and bring that up to 0 0.2. And go for the refresh again or control R. And that's about the size that I want. So now I want to actually attach this to this spiral and actually create a spiral of holes or spiral circles. So click the hole, hold down shift, sorry, not shift, hold down control, and then select the spiral. So now they're both selected. Now if you go up to draft, you've got something called, where is it, path array. And it's also available on the toolbar and a slight, under a slightly different name called creates copies of a selected object along a selection, selected path. So I'm going to use that one. And as you can see a number of circles have appeared and that's because only four have appeared there because you've got to change the count. So I'm going to go for 30 here. Hit enter, click off and you're going to have to go for a refresh again. Sometimes you can actually hit, say if I hit 20 there and click on the actual another option you'll see it will change so if I hit 35 and say click on base you can see it's changed there so that's about right that's what I'm looking for now I can use this as a sketch against my the face of my pad face of my body now to do that I'm gonna have to actually convert it to a sketch now to convert it to a sketch if I click on the actual path array and if I use my toolbar and I look for convert by dash dot by right, convert by dash by dash the uh, convert by dash by direct, directionally between <laughs> if you can say it right convert by directionally between draft and sketch objects. So I can use that one, or it's also available under the easier name to actually pronounce, which is draft sketch. So I click draft a sketch, and there's my sketch there. So if I click on my path array, right click, toggle visibility on that, and I'm going to do the same on the spiral, toggle visibility in the spiral. I've now got my sketch as a spiral sketch. 
Now you may lose definition, you may want to actually play with the path. To me there's not enough holes there, so I'm going to actually go back. What I'm going to have to do is delete the sketch, set the toggle of visibility back on, go to the circle, go to the path array, and then increase this, say, to 40. Let's give it 50. That's more like it. So I've increased that to 50. So then back on the path array, go to drafts, draft, um, draft a sketch, and then we've got our sketch. And then we can get rid of our path array if it's, if it's visible, right click, toggle visibility, or hit the space. At the moment, it's invisible, so we're good. So now I want to make my body visible because I hit it before. So toggle visibility. Now you'll see that my sketch is detached from my body, it's not actually inside that, so I'm gonna to have to click and click, hold and drag and put the sketch inside the body. Another thing is is that if I'm gonna actually create a not or a pad, sorry, not pad, a um, pocket with those is that I need those on the right face. At the moment it's on the bottom face um, because it was actually created on the bottom plane and we padded up our sketch from the bottom upwards as well. But that's quite easy to resolve. So if I click on sketch and I've got the map mode as deactivated at the moment, if I click on deactivated and use the, the three dots at the end, I can then go and select the face that I want to attach that to. So I'm going to attach it to this face and that moves it up now there. Click OK and now I can actually see that my sketch is in the right place. I've also got a sketch down here which is the path array which is still visible so I'm going to hit space and get rid of that. So that's the vis visibility done. I can now hit sketch, go over to the part design now my uh, sketch is selected, I can also obviously sketch, select the sketch in there. I can do what I want in here, I can actually go to the pocket, create a pocket with that sketch and have it go through all of it if I so, so desire. So that's it going through the whole of the sketch. And you can see the array is now nicely done there. So that's a nice, I mean that could be used as a call event if you so desire. Um, obviously we can just do it as a dimension and only have it pocketed through part of the actual actual surface so we can actually use that to uh, place to use it as a um, stack things in to push things into these holes um, say so spaghetti holder if you so desire I don't know why I picked that as an option but there you go, so so there we go, so that's all nicely done. We can also, if you so desire, is actually hit the sketch and use the others, so we could actually use a pad on there, pad that up for a toothbrush head or something like that, um, alter the pad in, and there we go. So that's how to make an array using the path and actually using one of the, the actual um, parameters primitive objects there, in this case a spiral, to actually create the desired effect that you want. Okay, so I hope that's helped, and hit me up with any other questions. I've got another video to make regarding the spirals and padding. Uh, the next video I'll be making is actually padding the whole spiral rather than just having an array of objects on the spiral, and I'll be using the the sweeper selected sketch along a path uh, to remove from the body. So that will be one of the videos that I'll be doing in the future. But I hope this has actually help, helped and answered a few questions. And I'll see you in the next video. If you like what you're seeing, please subscribe to my site. And also I have a Ko-Fi site um, where you can actually donate a few pence or a few pounds, dollars, or whatever your currency is. And that's at ko-fi.com slash 
M-A-N-G zero. And there you'll be able to help me fund my site and all the money that I actually get from any funds will actually get pushed back into the channel. Thanks a lot for watching and subscribing. I'll see you next time.